Hi, y'all. Let's talk about a subject I get asked about quite a bit, which is uh, Trump's travel bans and how they're faring in the courts. Uh, I've mostly talked about it on Twitter because there isn't really a great deal to say beyond, you know, well, you know the decisions are obviously wrong. Uh, if you look at the, the first one, the Ninth Circuit, when they um, held their little panel review and had the government lawyer in there talking uh, and issued their opinion, very little discussion of law in that opinion, a great deal of discussion of political philosophy. And it is curious to note that in the order the, from the Ninth Circuit, they didn't actually discuss the statute that is relevant. That was just, you know, oh, whatever, statutes, <laughs> who needs that? Uh, this was um, reviewed for re uh, rehearing on bank in the Ninth Circuit, and it was denied, and in the dissent, the, the judges who dissented went through this long litany of Supreme Court cases, saying time and time and time again that the judiciary has almost no role of any kind on these ma in dealing with these matters. The Constitution reposes in the Congress alone plenary power uh, to set uh, immigration policy. The Congress has uh, set up a, a series of statutes that empower the President to exclude aliens for any reason, any or any class of aliens for any reason, uh, so long as he makes a public pronouncement. So to that extent, the role of the judiciary is quite clear. Has there been a public uh, pronouncement that this policy is, uh, has been promulgated by the president? Has he done this publicly? Uh, yes or no? If yes, well, our job here is done. Uh, unless a person's coming with like a claim that, well, I'm not from one of these countries, or uh, I have, I've been excluded um, for reasons that are inconsistent with the order, in which case the judiciary, doing its proper role of interpreting uh, the statutes to say what the law is, not what the law should be. Remember, judges, despite the fact that many of them seem to believe otherwise, are not platonic guardians. They're legal officers. As uh, Oliver Wendell Holmes put it when someone said, your job is to do justice, he said, no, my job is to interpret law. Anyway, uh, that would be a, a prime case for the judiciary to do its proper role of reading the statute to see who is uh, to see what the requirements are for a pronouncement, has it been made publicly, and if so, what are the what are the guidelines that are put forth in this uh, this promulgated policy, and does this particular person fit within the four corners of that policy? If so, go away. If not, well, then someone has made a mistake. Uh, do come in unless you're otherwise barred. The Supreme Court has made it quite clear that that the Congress and the President can exclude aliens for reasons that would be illegal if done in the United States against uh, um, citizens, certainly, uh, foreign nationals living here, or even tourists. Uh, once you get, if you're a citizen, then the Constitution of the United States, with respect to our government, applies to you no matter where you are. If you are a foreign national, then you have constitutional rights once you get into the country. But this is about excluding people who haven't gotten into the country. And the Congress has unrestrained, unreviewable power to set any conditions they see fit on including or excluding aliens from coming here in the first place because foreigners uh, not on our soil have zero constitutional rights. The Constitution does not apply to them. They cannot lay claim to any of the provisions of the Constitution. They can find no justice there. Oh, it might be very, very unfair to have some policy or other that excludes people for this reason or that reason, and that should be played out in the democratic process at the ballot box. If the, if the American people don't like the decision, vote out the little rascals in, in the Congress and make them you know, uh, put into effect the policies that you prefer. The role of the judiciary, however, is extremely limited. And if you read the Ninth Circuit's, uh, I'm sorry, the, yeah, the Ninth Circuit's um, opinion, legal opinion, they talk about how the government didn't come forth and present us with any evidence. The government, the executive isn't required to prove anything to the courts. The, these judges sit there, act, and act as though they are entitled to be informed of something. The Congress has plenary power to decide immigration policy, uh, which is largely in the president's hand uh, day to day, and if it's not working well, then the Congress can revise the rules. The president has independent power in respect of foreign policy. The new Constitution mentions this too. And certainly excluding aliens is a way to punish a foreign nation. 
and they do it for reasons that are classified. They'll have information about this thing, this thing, or the other thing. And the whole point about having classified information, in the general sense, is that someone doesn't get to go into court and make the government come in and present the classified information to the court. The government can take action, which will cause it to be held, you know, it'll have to go into court and present the classified information in open court, for example, when it wants to seek a criminal prosecution. It can't go in there and say, well, we have classified information, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, and if, uh, if you just take our word for it, no, not good enough. Not good enough. Lay out your classified information. There's a provision of law that governs it. You lay it out in open court. If the prosecution is simply that important, then you take the rough with the smooth, and in order to get the prosecution, uh, I'm sorry, to get the conviction, you have to lay the goods out in open court. If you don't think that the prosecution is uh, really worth it, then you don't, you don't seek the prosecution. You say, well, you know, this classified information is so important that uh, we would much prefer to keep it secret at the expense of letting this, this uh, you know, whoever go free. That's the, that is the choice the government uh, has to make. And I would not want to be the person who has to make it in many cases because, you know, you're not dealing with the best of people in the world. But we take the, the, the uh, protections of a person who is merely accused of doing some wrongdoing by the government very seriously. The government has to have the goods, and those goods have to be laid out in open court. Uh, consequences be damned. Anyway, what has disappointed me isn't that the judges did this. You know they're going to do this. The, many of them are appointed specifically because they prefer to do political philosophy rather than law. Now, of course, if you ask them, oh, no, no, of course, judicial restraint's very important. And then they get through the confirmation process and it goes out the window and I am now a platonic guardian who will go out and do good for the world. Anyway, what has disappointed me has been the Trump administration's response. The Trump administration should not have sent a lawyer to litigate this. They should have said, we don't take advisory opinions from the judiciary. Judges, you do whatever you want to do. You have no power on this. The Supreme Court has been very clear over more than a century that you don't get to look behind the curtains. You don't get to question the executive. You don't get to hail the government into court and make them do anything. Is power is plenary, which means stay out of it. And because you have no power over this, we're not interested in dealing with you because we don't have to. We don't work for you. One of the, one of the uh, things about being a co-equal branch of government is the separation of powers. And these powers have been reposed in the President and the Congress exclusively. Nothing whatever to do with the judiciary. And because you can't show restraint by staying your hand and not meddling in the affairs of the Congress and in the affairs of the executive, because you show us that discourtesy, that disrespect, because you are that usurpatious by using your office to do more than is uh, justifiable, we are going to, in return, be exceedingly discourteous to you by telling you to go fuck yourself. We're not even going to come uh, play in your little goat rodeo. We're not jumping through your hoops. We're not circus poodles. We're taking no part in it. And whatever opinion you write, we're going to pull an Andrew Jackson on you. You have issued your, your mandate. Let us see you enforce it. I have an army behind me. The Congress has the purse. You have no power. That's what I wanted the, uh, uh, President Trump to do. That's not what the Trump administration has done, unfortunately. Uh, there are many instances in which the judges very properly, for good legal reasons, because they have the power to do it, the judicial power of the United States is reposed in them, to cause the executive or the Congress to stop doing something when they have exceeded their authority, the Congress or the President. Uh, here, the, co the Constitution is exceedingly clear. The Congress shall have the power to impose, to create, uniform rules for naturalization. The President shall be you know, the foreign policy guy. There, there's not any ambiguity there. These are clearly the province entirely of uh, the executive or the Congress, respectively. And the Supreme Court has recognized this over and over again. And I, I'm citing the Supreme Court not because a judicial opinion matters, uh, because a judicial opinion could be wrong, but, it ha but I'm saying it because the Supreme Court has, has said it, not because of the Supreme Court and they're the last word and Justice Robert Jackson's uh, little quip about the power of the Supreme Court where he said, uh, we are not final because we are infallible but we are infallible only because we are final, which is to say that short of a constitutional amendment or getting us to change our minds, once we've issued a constitutional ruling, the jig is up. I mean, the game is over. All, all that's left for the other departments to do is to decide whether or not they're going to, you know, 
thumb their noses at us because once we've issued it, it's issued and it's settled law. Don't like it? Go somewhere else. <clears throat> but th they have issued a decision, many decisions, recognizing that the courts simply do not have the power to get behind uh, the, these issues. It's not with, as they put it, the, the courts, the judges, are incompetent on these matters. They lack the, uh, the institutional competence, which is a nice way of saying that you judge, you district court judge, you circuit court judge, you are incompetent on these matters and you should stay out of them. And every case that goes up there where the courts have decided to get involved, I think time and time and time and time again, the Supreme Court said, nope, you're wrong, nope, you're wrong, stay out of it, nope, you're wrong, you should stay out of this. Not your business. These are political issues. Uh, these are left to the political branches. If you don't like that your judicial oath and the judicial power that you have is insufficient to create the policies in the world that you like, resign and go run for office and do it the right way. That's what I have to say about that. And that's what I wish the president would have done. Unfortunately, no. Have a good day.